uh, hello. Um, it's the Doki Doki Literature Club uh, DLC expansion, I think. Um, I played this game in 20... And when it came out, but I didn't finish it because I, I, I figured it happened. I just kind of just stopped playing. Um, I, I'm aware of what happens throughout the game, but there's uh, I never finished it, but I, I did it as side stories. Now, I believe you gotta like do everything, get all the endings for this game to get all the side stories. So, let's just jump into it, man. It is not suitable for children who are easily disturbed. Let's enter my name. Um, I'll, I'll do it like this. Okay. I typed out Nicholas. I should not type out Nicholas. Let's make it Nick. There we go. I'm kind of feeling, maybe Nicholas is more, I, I never went by Nicholas, is that my name, yeah, everyone always called call me Nick, I feel like Nicholas adds to the, I'm not used to it, so it might make me feel weird, let's give it a try, you gotta capitalize Nicholas, man. I can type, there we go. <coughs> Alright, I think we're good. Dunk a hunk a dunk. <coughs> okay. Hey. I see an annoying girl running towards me from a distance. From the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor, and a good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you just never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on most days like this, but starting around high school, we sh she would oversleep more than more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting, waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of my crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha ha, I overslept again, but I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh? You say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Nicholas. Well, people stare at you for acting weird, and I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me, after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, mean even if you wanted me to meet what? Uh, whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Nicholas, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already. I'm not interested in joining any club, Sayori. I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did. One of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sorry likes to worry a little too much about me, when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Couldn't be more wrong. Uh huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn, that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not interested in the real world. You trust me, right? I'm gonna keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look into a few clubs that makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay. Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relate to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Dunk, dunk, dunk. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I knew it. 
I'm gonna see if the controls feel. Okay. I'm gonna let a candle. Why not? Earbuds, you can go over here for now. Uh, lighter. This is the fresh cotton. Don't mind if I do. Dunk a dunk 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 a dunk a dunk 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 a dunk a dunk dunk a dunk a dunk dunk. The school day is as ordinary as ever. Ends over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blank blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Zuri wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? S Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need a wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, y you know what? Well, then you could come to my club, Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Eh, yeah, meanie. Sayori is the vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. And she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club. She inherited the title of vice president. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to plan all this out. But a long sigh. <sighs> Fine, I'll stop by for cupcakes, okay? Yeah, yeah, yes, let's go. And thus today, marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure to meeting you. Sayori always said nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Nicholas, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club, full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. <laughs> Girl with a sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes, me, makes her look like a first year student. Also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, and turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well. It's nice to meet both of you. Sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Nicholas. Monica smiles sweetly. We didn't know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica, it's amazing how someone re remembers... I, I had a school class of like... My year was like 350. I can never... Fathom remembering a, cl a classmate from last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So having her smile on me so generally feels a little... You too, Monica. Come sit down, Nicholas. We made room for you at the table. So you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got too excited. But how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As I already mentioned, it's been widened, so there is one extra space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Asuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, 
where Hasuki grabs a wrapped tray, and Yuri opens the closet. So feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayuri. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Ooh, voila! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were good at baking, Natsuki. Hey, 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 oh, well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayuri grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious. Sayuri talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around on my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Asuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. I think it's sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. <laughs> Thank you, Natsuki. Oh, why are you thanking me? It's not like I haven't heard this somewhere before. Made them for you or anything. Yeah, I thought you technically did. Sayuri said, well, maybe, but not for you. You, 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 you know you, dummy. All right, I get up and I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set, carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before sitting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. Get the whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teacher gives us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? <sighs> uh, I, I guess. <laughs> Don't get, let yourself get intimidated, you're always just trying to impress you. Well, that's not it. That's not. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me. That's not what I would ever say. But at least, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow. The smile is at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I should tell Monica that I wasn't practically. I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, they haven't joined the clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? President of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the other major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around major clubs. Really nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling the dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. I'm surprised there aren't many people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we'll be, uh, we can all really grow with this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah, we'll do our best. You, you I forget how I did her accent. You, you know it. And that's not what it was. Everyone enthusiastically screams. Uh, such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're also delighted by the idea of a new member joining. I also don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Nicholas, what kind? So, Nicholas, what kind of things do you like to read? Uh, well. Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Simulacrium? The Simulacrium? The Simulacrium? The, ah, uh, frick. Uh, Lord of the... Uh, dictionary? No. Uh, simulacrium. Simulac... Uh, simula simulacrium? Similarian! Half. Considering how little I read to, I, I bet that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. 
I think she was to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? But without thinking of after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. Telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but I light up as she finds the comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you in for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. I've read horror books once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at a minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really, I wouldn't expect that, Yuri. But someone so gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or, take me, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. But only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Asuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. N never mind. I, I can't. That's right. You really usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? I, I can't, man. You left a piece of scrap paper behind the last club meeting. Looks like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud. Give that back. Fine, fine. Hey, <laughs> your cupcakes are. Whoops. Everything. Is there a history? Yes. Hey, <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems. Everything you do is as cute as you are. Serious Lam sidles, sidles. Up behind Asuki and puts her hand on her shoulders. I'm not cute. Asuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think it's impressive. Why don't you share some of them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Not very confident. Not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing the levels of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is written. Is writing to oneself. But be willing to open up your re readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have a writing experience? Do you have a writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you could set an example and help Mitsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Ellipses. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Ah, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Ellipses. Mitsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. So I'll go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we will share them with each other. That way everyone is even. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, ellipses. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Nicholas? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Uh, hold on. There's still one problem. What's that? Now that we're back on the original topic of me joining the club, I boldly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. The hairy men may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made that des any decision. Still have other clubs to look at, and I, um, I, I lose my train of thought. All oh, four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry. I thought, <laughs> Nicholas, you all... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision that went like this? That is, if writing poems is a price to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls, ellipses. Right. Okay. I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yas, I'm so happy. Sorry, wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me. You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just wanted to, if you were really this game for the cupcakes, I would have been super pissed. Then let's make it official. Welcome to the literature club. 
Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Nicholas, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. And I really impressed the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills. I already feel the anxiety rolling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Rory and Asuki clean up their food. Hey, Nicholas, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sarah and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! Yay! With that, the two of us apart from the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayuri. Masuki. Yuri. And of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I need to make the most of my I need to make the most most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess the starts with writing a poem tonight. Time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good may happen. I really like your poem the most. Jumpy family, marshmallow, pure, vivacious, a tone, fluffy, anxiety, headphones, lollipop, a tone. Mr. Ray, bunny, summer, starscape, embrace, imagination, play. Tenacious, awesome, effulgent. Together, games, extraordinary, pain, existence, inferno, fireflies, heaven sent. I'm assuming, I thought on the left hand side what you pitch shows up. Well, I guess it's at the 20s, so maybe it doesn't make sense. What, what did we pick? We picked a, a, a tone, effulgent. A tone, the effulgent. Inferno. Pound Sparkle. For Crimson. Graveyard. Shares Essence. Of Unrequited Shame. Agonizing. Desire for misery and fear. Despise Sticky Wrath. Massacre. My determination. Of happiness. I got an achievement. Doki Doki Poetry Slam. Then enough time during the poem minigame for the music to loop. You know? Contamination. I forgot what we said before. Determination or what? Of email. Hi again, Nicholas. Good to see you didn't run away on us. Ha 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 ha. Now don't worry. Might be a little strange for me, but at least kept my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Nicholas. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst in the literature, when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. So you already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. <laughs> and last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Masuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Asuki finds herself stuck between, say, Monica and Manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Asuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. 
Nicholas always gives me a, gives his best along with he's having fun. He helps me with my busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sorry, that's because your room is as messy, it's so messy it's distracting. And your room was set your house on fire once. Is that so? Eh hey, hey. You two are really good friends, aren't you? Might be a little jealous. How come? You and Nicholas can be good friends can become good friends too. Um um This is Sayori. This is uh, Sayori. Um Ellipsis. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she puts me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, Sayori. Eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be, don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sayori made, me s made it sound like it's a big deal when it's really not. Uh... What do I do? Eh? I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means something to me to rescue the situation. I guess something to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is, is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. hell. I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. Sure, read. So kept to your ten. It should keep your attention, even though we don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This, this is. How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. For you. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. Doesn't seem to be the case. Siri and Monica are having a cheesy conversation in the corner. Cheery. Yuri's face is already buried in her book. You can nobody notice her intense expression, as she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Mitsuki is rummaging around the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I took to the cover of the book. It's like the same book that she lent me. More than that, she needs to be on the first few pages. Ah. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She just thinks of the glance at me, and her eyes meet for a split second. Ellipses. It only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. S sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If I were focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. I'm just reading it, rereading this a bit of this, so. That's the book you gave me, right? Hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah. Well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday. Ah, uh, that's not what I meant. I, I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah. I see. I mean, fairly obvious that she, ob, very, fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. Very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyways? Well, mm -hmm. the girl closes the book and scans your eyes over the back. Boy's titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. Really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? Everybody made it sound like it's going to be some nice story. So this dark turn came from nowhere. Ah! Very gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of this sort of thing, Nicholas? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. 
Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. So shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals, or their own philosophy, that they just believe in. But suddenly when you thought you related to the protagonist, it may not be a naive, be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest in it or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should, I should know that I have this problem. I'm gonna let things, I'm gonna let things like books and writings fill my thoughts. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please tell me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. It just means you're passionate about reading. All you can do is listen. The literature club, after all. Ah. That's... Well, that's true. In, in fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to. Ha ha ha. But what are you saying? Just moments ago you said you were looking forward to it. Ellipses. Let me just get the book. Will you retrieve the book that I put into my bag? Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? Slip into the seat next to Yuri's? Ah. Yeah. Are, are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's something that I've never... I'm not very used to. But is reading in company is with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, uh, Alright. Open the book and start the prologue. I don't understand what Yuri means about reading and company. I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. Not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but that feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. She's reading from my book instead. So sorry. I was just. Yuri, you really don't. You really apologize a lot, don't you? I. I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean, ha 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 ha. Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk and toes up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we really each lean a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Believe my left arm is in the way. It's in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the, back the book open. Uh, I guess this makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. Do the same with my right arm. On the right side of the book. That way I turn the page and Yuri slides it under her thumb and her flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're held even closer together than before. Actually kind of distracting. I had one class out of my four years of high school that had desks like this. The rest of them had the, uh... The right beam, like the metal bar coming from the right side of the desk, so you would like sit in all cozy like. Actually kind of distracting me. So I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face as she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Yeah. Turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got distracted for a second. Let's over Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know if I'll, how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not, you're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. Continue reading. Yuri's no longer asking me if I remember to return the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, turned by my own religion. In the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning the page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting a flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. Might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of resembles reminds me of you a little bit. You, you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all the things that she says and does. And she's afraid she'll do something wrong. Not like I can see it into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Nicholas. That's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. 
Oh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Oh, wait, wait. I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were so self-conscious about that sort of thing. Oopsies. I guess I'm more meant that it's kind of cute. Uh huh? Uh, what were you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. Oopsies. I think it's about time we share today's bones with each other. Might not have enough time if we wait too long. Uh huh? Yuri exhales. Spared if I'm finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kinda down. Sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close the top of my thumb. Alright. Guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'd be more fun to read uh, with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I'll make a mental note of where I left off in the book. Then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Now that everyone's ready, why don't you find something to share with? Find someone to share with. I can't wait. Suri and Monica enthusiastically. I don't know, like, the way I'm doing it, Suri's so voice is to like start my voice and then slide my lips to the left side of my mouth and then only talk of the left side of my mouth. It's weird, but like it's, it's working. I kind of sound the same though. So Yuri, I don't have a voice for Monica yet. I don't even know like what what kind of voice I would use. So Yuri and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. So Yuri is all uh, is on a wrinkled sheet, a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf, torn from a spiral notebook. Other hand, Monica wrote hers in composition notebook. I've never seen Monica's pristine handwriting from what I, where from where I sit. Azuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who we gotta do all for? Well, we've been talking to Yuri, and I have a voice down for her, so we'll do Yuri first. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion, to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, it was her glam eyes laying. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... Ugh. You're going to hate me. Um... You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh? That's... I guess you're right. Why am I getting so nervous for? Ah, ah, ah. Yuri takes a breath. So... What kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imaginary and metaphors, imagery and metaphors, indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. Actually, my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly and then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant... Uh, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. Catches your finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it more down thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. So there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through them myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize is new writers they try to make their syllables very de deliberate, a deliberate style. In other words, they tend to pick a writing st style separate from their topic and matter, and they form fit the two together. And the result is that both the styles and expressiveness are weakened. Yuri finds his, her Yuri finds her train of thought as if it, her as it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Stammer is completely gone, and she's found sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes to practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club also gives you valuable feedback. So we can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri has apologized to herself, to me, or to Nasuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thoughts process behind it. My thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily. 
as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which still is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this once. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The um, last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green blur of the future. <clears throat> I bathe, calm, breathing air of the um, present while living in the past. The light flickens. I flick him back. I gotta sneeze so badly, man. Oh my god. Okay. Ugh. I'm sorry if that's terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. Took you a long time to read. Ah. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting's very pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I, I like the poem. Even though it was short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. It, it wasn't too short. You usually write longer poems. Not, not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. This is the first time sharing. I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest. Easy to digest, I suppose. Are you in a ghost story? Who? Who? Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Nicholas. Really? Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well? Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember, the poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. You can do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In that case, perhaps, the subject of the poem is only being topically compared to a ghost, to a ghost lingering in a last remaining place of comfort, being able to let go of the past, as soon to be left with nothing. A lot more soul putting it that way. I haven't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? eh? It's, it's really nothing. It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn it to a thing from you. You, you, th you think so? Yeah, of course. Ah, uh, you know, I was really nervous doing about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Nicholas. Ah, uh, me too. Should I show my poem to next? Um, Sayori so is moving my mouth to the left. It's much easier to do my voice. This is a good poem, Nicholas. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? Eh, <laughs> I guess you're right. That's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write a poem, write one at all. I'm really happy that you wrote one. This reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but it doesn't mean I'm i break my promise. See? Like I said before, Nicholas, deep down you're not selfish at all, are you know? Try new things like this for other people. Something that are only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined, knowing how much it means to her and all. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay. You know, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Uh -huh. I'm overdoing it. We'll see about that. Dear sun Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning it makes me feel like you missed me. Consuming at my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Ah, oh, freak, man. F, 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 F. Alright, I, I won't be loading a save. Well, sorry about the poem. Sayori. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No? Just just a little bit. can answer just a little bit to her yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I tried my best. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? Sounds just like you. Really? 
Yeah. Especially the last line. I mean, eggs with toast. Even though you were late for school, it's, it's bad to get breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess that's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Okay, I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna go blow my nose. Honestly, I can't breathe. <laughs> I'll be right back. And I'll also do a flash marker. <laughs> 